everybody. We are live. Uh, Dr. Jill live. You're back for another episode with a special guest again today. Today, we're talking about gut health and the top probiotics you should know about and you should be taking. Um, I have a lot to say about that, which we'll dive in today. Uh, just so you know, you can catch all of our previous episodes on my YouTube channel, which is just under my name on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you listen or watch podcasts. And please stop in uh, wherever you listen or watch and leave a review. If you're on YouTube, uh, hit that subscribe button so that we can get this out to you and more people. Um, today, today I have an amazing guest who's been a friend for a long time. I'm just thinking back, Tom, I'm going to introduce you in a second, but you were even the one who introduced me to the naturopath who ended up being in my office. So we've had this really neat, yeah. I remember where I was standing, we're like, hey, I know this person who might be a good fit for your office. And then it turned out to be a beautiful, she's a beautiful friend of mine now. So um, thank yeah. you for that. And so many other things over the years, I just appreciate um, you're a, an amazing human being. And I love people like that who do great work in the business world and in the health world, but also just who are amazing human beings. And you're one of those. Um, so I'm super excited to have you today. So for everybody listening, um, I want to introduce Dr. Tom. Dr. Tom Bain is a chiropractic physician and a public speaker dedicated to understanding and improving the gut microbiome. As the president of Microbiome Labs, Dr. Bain travels around the world to educate other healthcare practitioners on the connection between the gut microbiome and many chronic diseases. His extensive understanding of supplement manufacturing and clinical experience have given him a unique ability to formulate integrative solutions for digestive and immune health. In his own clinic, Dr. Bain has spent over 24 years helping his patients to optimize their digestive health, improve autoimmune conditions, and enhance detoxification. Though he's very active in his role at Microbiome Labs, he continues to see patients a few days a week at his clinic, uh, Pure Balance Natural Health in Glenview, Illinois, which is not far from where I grew up, Tom. <laughs> so welcome, yes. welcome. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Jill. Thank you for that intro. It's very great to be here. I'm, I'm excited to talk if you spend me some time. Me too. Me too. And like I said, I just think the world of you and what you've done. And I love your story. I know a little bit about that, but I want to share it with listeners. We have a lot of patients and clients, but we also have practitioners. And to me, it's one of those really special stories about like thinking outside the box, being curious, dreaming big. And you've done some amazing, amazing. I mean, I don't know of any other company that's made such change in our field and really even transformed my own practice. Would you be able to share with us a little bit about your journey? Like, how did this happen? How did you start? Yeah. You, yeah. You, you know, I guess, I guess the, the, one of the, the more pivotal points was, uh, was actually, um, uh, meeting my wife. Um, so I was in chiropractic school coming from, a athletic trainer, sports medicine, uh, type of background. And, uh, and I met my wife and, and she, her dad was a chiropractor and he did acupuncture and he used botanicals and, and, and different things. And, and it was more of a natural medicine approach to, to things. And, and uh, I, I started hanging out with her and started uh, learning more about what she was learning. And, uh, and then afterwards, her dad said, um, I've got two chiropractic clinics, um, basically functional medicine clinics in the, in the mid nineties. And he was transitioning to the business side. He was, he was running a vitamin manufacturing and distribution company. And so we went there and took over his practices and, um, and it just got really absorbed into the functional medicine world and, um, and then helped him with his business and actually helped him, uh, sell his business. Metagenics is, uh, bought him in the early two thousands. And so Metagenics European, uh, headquarters uh -huh. is in Ostend, Belgium, which is where my wife's from and where she grew up and where my father-in-law's company, uh, we built and sold to Metagenics in the early 2000s. So I kind of recognized the business side of, of functional medicine uh, at a very early age in my career. Um, and I, I really, you know, I, I, I always saw patients. I enjoyed it. Um, I, I, but I, I really feel like I make better decisions as a businessman because of my background in, in practice and, and working with patients and, and understanding pain points for, for physicians. Uh, so after we sold the Metagenics, moved back to the U.S. and um, started a family practice in the northern birds of Chicago. And, but I always stayed active on the business side and uh, had a few, uh, few things that didn't quite pan out. I was importing some botanicals from Germany for a while and uh, just doing a number of different things. But I, I came, uh, I, I 
became friends with Karan Krishnan uh, through another project, and we had done a few things on the side, and and he presented me with the the initial information from the spores. Wow! And uh, because he knew I had connections to metagenics, he wanted me to to sell the spores to metagenics. So he gave me all this data on uh-huh. spores, and I was blown away. I was like. And, uh, and fortunately for us, a number of the big boys that we shopped it to, they, they either didn't want it or they were just going to, they didn't understand it. A lot of them just couldn't wrap their heads around it. Um, and then the other ones were like, well, we'll just put it on the shelf next to all our other products. Right. And, and, and it really is a, it's, it's such a disruptive story. You know, when, when we first launched the company, the, for the first two or three years, we only did one lecture, one webinar we were in a conference we did the t- title of the lecture was forget what you think you know about probiotics wow. you know and it was just kind of in your face it was like we can either do this and quietly do it or we can go out in the middle of the playground punch the bully in the nose and see what happens yeah and so we did we 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 went with the idea that you know what was happening in the marketplace in, in, in the mid 90s and then and and then that it, you started to see products like lactobacillus, lactobacillus sporogenes, right? You started to hear some of these things. Very, you had to really be into gut health right, to, right. to know about these things, but you would hear about it. Lactobacillus sporogenes is actually mischaracterized right, bacillus. Right. Uh, but but back in the nineties, I remember using it and being like, "This stuff's pretty good. What is this stuff?" You know, and um, and it kind of made sense, but um we what you saw in in the um in the marketplace is it was based on marketing principles it really wasn't based on science yeah right so it was like okay well the best best probiotics are refrigerated okay um where's the study that shows that right right uh, there isn't one yeah uh more cfus is are better um uh, okay where's that research there are there is none Right. There's not one study that shows 50 billion is better than 10 billion. In fact, a lot of the, the lactobifido-based uh, research is actually done with 1 to 2 billion. Yeah. They use a study on 1 to 2 billion to justify something 10 billion. Right? It just it didn't make sense. And it, and it was like, where does this end? You know, now we got 125 billion. Right, and right. Where, where, where are we going to stop with this? You know? So, and, and what are you basing it on? Right? So... And, and I was just as guilty, I, I would say. I, I, I talked in marketing talk when I talked about probiotics. Well, you know, you need to rotate them every few months because blah, 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 blah. I was like, what did I base that on? Well, that, that's what my rep told me. So that's what I regurgitated. You know, but it, 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 there really was no research. And then the last thing that was, is really, it's, it's an annoying component of the, of the functional medicine market is this. I have a research study on this ingredient and I have a research study on this ingredient. I'm going to mix them together and they're going to do these two things. You know, that, that's not science, especially right. when you're talking about biologics like bacteria. You know, we don't know if they cross react with each other, if they don't like each other. So you have to do finished product research. You have to have clinical studies on your finished product. And when you look at the functional medicine space, there's almost none. There, there, there's none. There, there was none in the, you know, when we launched. And, um, and so we kind of just took the attitude of we're going to disrupt this marketplace and we're going to disrupt it with science. Yeah. Um, before we launched, spores were all over agriculture, aquaculture, uh, veterinary medicine, the, the predominant probiotics that are used are spore based. And the reason is because those types of industries, they measure results. Yes. You know, I give my cow this back and my cow is healthier, then I make more money. Then they can justify it. If they're just throwing dead bacteria at them and it doesn't do anything for the cow, then the farmer doesn't continue to do it. And so so we were very fortunate to uh, to meet Dr. Simon Cutting, who's the uh, foremost premier spore researcher in the world. And he had a whole bacterial bank. Wow. And then through different conversations with him, we were able to put together the five strains of spore-based bacteria that make up megaspore. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, I love hearing the journey because um, 
my own journey coincides a little bit. 21 years ago, I had cancer and then Crohn's disease. And that was again, back in the early ages of what we knew about probiotics and things. And all I remember was I did not do well on any of the probiotics except bacillus coagulans. That was the only thing out in the market. And I didn't know, even as a practitioner, I was in med school then, but I didn't know what it was. I just knew this one's different, right? So it's funny. One of the reasons I've always been so passionate about your company and Megaspore and all the probiotics since then is because I knew back then something was different about this. I didn't even know it was a spore back then, right? I just knew it was different and it worked. It worked dramatically and it wasn't a lot of billions. It wasn't a lot of, you know, as you and I know, number one, it can be dead. These have been uh, embryolized in amber for tens of thousands, if not, you know, longer of years and they're still still work. So they don't need to be. And then the fact that um, all the studies on diversity, that was also something that caught my attention. So anyway, I've been a huge fan even before I knew it, because I like, what is this thing that works so well for me? And that was bacillus coagulans. Now I'm, I'm just bacillus subtilis. It's one spore. It's your HU58. Right. And it is the one that I will give to my toughest patients. And I have yet to have anyone who has a reaction to it. Now that might be there. I'm sure there are some people who would, but literally it's one of those products I can guarantee that they're going to do well on even the most sensitive right. guts, SIBO, the CIFO, the dysbiosis, the um, clostridia, you name it. Um, there's so many things about the spores. I am just the biggest fan. And of course, that's why your company's grown because you have a product that really works. So it's neat to hear the backstory though, because you've obviously had a really great business mind and that's, it took someone like you and um, Kieran who to really take it to the level. And I'm, I remember those lectures <laughs> or like, who, what is yeah. this? You're right. Um, but the, the put room for the point initially, for us who are in practice, it works. Okay. Yeah. So initially we, we didn't know exactly what we had. Right. right. Like, and, and, and we each had day jobs and, you know, this was a, a kind of a side hustle thing in the beginning. And so, you know, um, the one thing that we understood though, was even the spore itself, um, if it's not in spore form, it's useless. Um, and, and what we were noticing is that, you know, okay, one, there is no, there was no multi-spore formulations in the market before we came along. But then secondly, even some of the single strain uh, products that were in the marketplace, when we'd evaluate them, sometimes there'd be, you know, 30% spore forms, meaning 70% of the product was probably being destroyed by the stomach acid, just like lactobacillus and bifidobacteria get destroyed right. by the stomach acid. So, so there were so many interesting pieces to it. So the first thing we did that we could afford, <laughs> to be honest with you, was to to have an independent laboratory just analyze products what does it say on the label this one says 50 billion how many how many are actually in the 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 capsule when you analyze it and then how many survive through a simulated gastric system so Mm -hmm. uh, a ph of 1.2 for two hours and then bile salts uh, for 20 minutes and so so this is a standard USP model. And so we thought, well, let's do it. And so we took every product from the professional space and, uh, and one or two from the retail space. Mm-hmm. And we analyzed that. Some of the products that said 50 billion on the product, they actually had 250 billion in the capsule. Now, why would somebody put 250 billion in the capsule when they're only charging you for 50 billion? Mm-hmm. Well, the reason is quite simple. They know their product's dying on the shelf. They know that they've got to have 50 billion by the expiration date. Mm-hmm. So what was interesting is the overage, um, crazy amounts of overage because of the loss of the bacteria over time. Um, but it didn't matter. It didn't matter if there were 1 billion, like there were in some yogurts uh, that we saw. There was just relatively small amounts. Or we had 250 billion in, 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 a, in a label in a bottle that was labeled 50 billion. Yeah. It didn't matter how many it was, they were completely destroyed in the gastric survivability model. Mm-hmm. Not right, 50% destroyed. Mm-hmm. They were completely destroyed. You know, so so to the so then and then we did it with the spores and they survived. So that was that was our first thing that we did. Our survives, yours doesn't. Yeah. And that's all we had to go with. Uh, and then we had been doing some uh, some vitamin K2 research, uh-huh. and uh, we were doing that with a, a researcher at uh, University of North Texas. And we just happened to be asking, you know, what else you got going? What uh, what, what other types of research are you doing? 
and he mentioned what essentially was a leaky gut stud. Yeah. Um, and, and we were like, and he was talking about from the perspective of, cardi- uh, of cardiovascular disease. Wow. And yeah, and he's like, I have a model. What we do is we, we feed a high fat, high caloric uh, meal to a patient, and then we monitor their blood, and it's five hour mark post prandially. We see a five to six X spike in their LPS, and, uh, and then we can test that against that. We can see if you can prevent it or treat it or whatever it might be. And uh, I was like, that's a leaky gut study. I'm like, well, let's do it. Why not? We had some data on H258 that, that the subtilis uh, work helped with the tight junctions, some, some things like that. We had at least enough data to think, well, let's give it a shot. And so what we were able to show is a 45% reduction in LPS. Hmm. But the, the control group, the placebo group, it, the LPS actually increased over time. Wow. So it was actually more than 70% difference between the two groups. Um, so, so basically this proved one, humans have leaky gut. Mm-hmm. So the first study that we did where we actually proved that healthy humans have uh, permeability issues in their gut. And was that the study in the college students, that age group, or was it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we fed, we fed college students uh, a McDonald's breakfast uh-huh. Or uh, or was a cheese pizza from a gas station. Uh-huh. <laughs> Those are the two things that we found were able to create endotoxicity in healthy patients. And we were able to increase the amount of LPS that was circulating through their bloodstream. Wow. Now, uh, Tom, I just want to pause it real quick for the listeners in case I just flew by you. So cheese pizza from the gas station and a McDonald's breakfast. And you were able to take a healthy college kid and induce intestinal permeability. So I want to make sure that you're listening. You hear that. (laughs) Hey, everybody. I just stopped by to let you know that my new book, Unexpected, Finding Resilience Through Functional Medicine, Science, and Faith, is now available for order wherever you purchase books. In this book, I share my own journey of overcoming life-threatening illness and the tools and tips and tricks and hope and resilience I found along the way. This book includes practical advice for things like cancer and Crohn's disease and other autoimmune conditions, infections like Lyme or Epstein-Barr and mold and biotoxin-related illness. What I really hope is that as you read this book, you find transformational wisdom for health and healing. If you want to get your own copy, stop by readunexpected.com. There you can also collect your free bonuses. So grab your copy today and begin your own transformational journey through functional medicine in finding resilience. <laughs> and so then we sent them home with a 30 day supply of the probiotic and then came back and did the same test again. And we, like you said, there was a 70% difference between the two groups. That was kind of the drop the mic moment. That was when we just exploded in growth. Because one, we're walking into a, to a room of say, you know, I remember going into a room with 200 of, probably the leading chiropractors in the country were in, in one room in, uh, in Florida for a, uh, a chiropractic nutrition co- convention. And um, there had been a sales rep on before me and people were kind of, uh, they were yeah, loud. Yeah. And it was, uh, and I walked up and I said, you know, when I was in, in my office on Tuesday seeing patients and everybody just went home and sat up and started listening. And then I started saying, and I've got this research study. And like, what do you mean you have a research study? We, we've never heard of that. Right. It's like, well, I know it's a thing in science. You do research. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. work. You don't just use marketing principles to do right. it. I know it's unique. Um, being a chiropractor myself, I, I taught a lot in the chiropractic uh, schools. Yeah. Chiropractors are first responders. They like new stuff. Yeah. You know, they want to be the first ones. So we grew uh, the first year and a half. We only did chiropractic shows. Um, and then we started branching out into, into the functional medicine shows, but it was that leaky gut study in 2017 that really put us on the map. And, uh, and then it was like, you know, and, and I, I always say that I was, I was in Phoenix, uh, last week doing a lecture with a bunch of docs and, and it's like, you know, I, I always took the approach of, you know, I feel knowledge is power. Right. And so, so when, when I'm sitting with a patient. If, if somebody wants to help me with patients, then give me knowledge. Give, yeah. give me 
give me the power I need to help that patient. I would want to be able to say to the patient, look, Mrs. Jones, you need to take this product. And the reason you need to take this product is because this product has been proven to help patients that have your condition, yeah. right? That's that's my exactly. goal. You're going to make me a better doctor. Yeah, yeah. Put me in that right? Case, right? So, right? So fortunately, with the leaky gut, we were able to do that with pretty right. much everybody that's in coming into your office. Yeah. Like nobody comes in to Flatiron yeah. who doesn't have evidence of LPS in the bloodstream after they eat a meal. Exactly. And so it's it's just the reality of the situation. We in our studies we saw that but we we eliminate people that had any diagnosed condition. So these were what you would consider to be healthy mm-hmm. adults. And 55% of them had postprandial endotoxemia. They yep. had yep. so yeah. it's it's uh it's an interesting thing. And when you talk about people that are sick. Yeah. Or people and then you start looking at the data as far as obesity, cardiovascular disease, di- diabetes. I mean, it's all linked. In fact, Tom, I don't know if you know this, but let me show you something real quick here on my shelf that has to So I, t- I used to, I still teach with you guys, but I've been a big fan. And of course, one of your, you know, lectures and I teach the cardiovascular module with uh, Mark Houston, A4M. And that was my part is LPS. So this is the integrative cardiology textbook. And my chapter in there is on the gut and on lipopolysaccharides and the heart. And it's so relevant. I mean, that's what they're teaching the cardiovascular integrative medicine. And it comes from the stuff we're talking about right now. And it, right. in there, I talk about the power of spores. <laughs> and again, yeah. that's partially thanks to you because you brought that to my awareness. And I remember the big, just like you had that aha when you saw the yeah. you're like, I'm like, same thing for me. It was like, that's why I've been such an advocate. So I'm like, number one, this makes sense. Number two, it works. Number three, you've got the data. So great work yeah. because you're helping people like me go out in the world and change cardiovascular medicine. <laughs> yes, yes. And I hope it changes the industry. I yeah. hope yeah. people start being, the companies start being more responsible and, and yeah. doing finished product clinical research. Yeah. You know, I don't think you need to go out and do a bunch of studies on a bee complex, but when right. you're talking about live bacteria and you're talking mm-hmm. about, you know, changing the microbiome, or different things like this, prove it. Exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't cost a lot. When, when, and, and, and I, I say this when I lecture, it's really the, the future is in the hands of the docs now. Yeah. Uh, they can control what happens in the marketplace by speaking with their dollars and, and only supporting companies that, that do the type of research that's necessary to empower them to be better yeah. doctors. I mean, it's, and you it's have really- to, like you, obviously I love the fact, and you brought this up a couple of times. It's so powerful when you practice, you kind of lose your integrity a little bit. If you stop practicing and go out and just, just it, there's nothing wrong with people becoming authors or creatives or whatever, everybody to their own. Right. But I have such yeah. a respect for, and I, hopefully I will always be someone who's in this clinic with patients because that keeps you honest. Bob Roundtree used to say, it keeps me honest. Right. I loved how he said that because he, and it's true when we see, cause the complexity of the human being is there's no, no amount of, we can write them a protocol and it works for so many people, but there's always going to be more complexity. And when we're in the clinic, we're continuing to find, you know, solutions and actually see real people. And now our climate of medicine is even more complex post COVID. So we need this yeah. kind of, uh, curiosity and seeking, um, science really as a balance. So I appreciate that. Well, and, what's, and what's so fascinating to me is like, like we're talking about a leaky gut, mm-hmm. but you've already brought up cardiovascular disease, yeah. you know, and when we look at this whole COVID fiasco, um, the people who didn't make it to COVID were people that had chronic leaky gut and had that yes. cytokine based yep. inflammation. All we know the gut is such a core, core, core piece. In fact, more and more, even recently, the Lyme conference started coming out with just a microbiome section. And it's like, we know the microbiome is so, so powerful. And the data continues to point to this. So Tom, obviously we, uh, you and I are huge fans of spores. You guys have created some of the best products in the world. I really believe that. Um, what's the future? I mean, you've got the, some of the Zen biotics that can psychobiotics, we call them anything else on yeah. the horizon or what else have you been working on that you think is going to be the next uh, level up in gut health? So, uh, microbiome labs was acquired in 2021 by yeah. no designs. Uh, and so basically, you know, things just got so big, uh, and you know, you've got, you know, a chiropractor and a microbiologist running a, a company, right? Uh, we had 125 employees around the country. We had, I mean, it was just a monster. Yeah. Um, we, we grew so fast yeah. during COVID. Yeah. Uh, 
I know COVID was a, a difficult thing for a lot of people, but um, we managed to grow massively through COVID. And, um, and when companies around the globe were looking at us, we obviously were uh, checking off all the right boxes. Yeah. And, and so we took the opportunity. We had a third partner who was a little bit older and he wanted to get out. And that, that's what initiated some of the conversations. And, and Novozymes came along and, and they're, it's interesting, they're a biotechnology company. They're not a pharmaceutical company. They're a biotechnology company. Uh, they make enzymes for industrial purposes. Uh, if you name whatever laundry detergent you use, the enzymes in it that come from Novozymes. Oh, wow, right? cool. So they're, they're a massive company, but they did do a lot in human health. And so they started this human health side to their business. And they acquired, right before they acquired us, they acquired Precision Biology which was an Irish company. And uh, Precision Biotics has some very unique cell signal molecule products, right? Some metabolic response modifiers, some bacteria that yeah. don't necessarily change your microbiome. They don't necessarily do what the spores do, but they treat real specific situations and are able to, to help people in certain situations. Um, one of the strains, one of the, the hero strains, in my opinion, is the 1714 strain uh -huh. of bifidobacterium longum, and that, that's in the Zen Biome suite of products. It's a very unique product, and it helps to shunt the breakdown of, of tryptophan away from the neuroinflammatory kynurene quinolinic acid side of ne a neurodegenerative, neuroirritant mm -hmm. to the more neuroprotective side of serotonin and melatonin. And so that's a huge thing. And so when patients were coming in with uh, into the big hospitals in New York City and things like that with COVID in the beginning, they were they were they knew right away these people had elevated levels of quinolinic acid. What's that all about, right? So this disrupted tryptophan breakdown is part of this neuroinflammatory cascade, and the inflammation that goes along with it is kind of that. It's the brush fire. That when the when the COVID comes in and then it, it it becomes the fire everywhere and then the organs each get choked off and the patient dies right so patients that had the worst outcome had high levels of quinolinic acid we've known that forever that's CDC information so so the uh, seventeen fourteen strain is shown to shift the breakdown of tryptophan away from the neuroinflammatory and more towards the neuroprotective. Um, and so, and, and we've been able to show that in doing that, we improve a patient's ability to cope with stress. Yeah. We improve on symptoms of anxiety and depression as a result of that shift in, in tryptophan breakdown. And so, so it's very interesting product. It, it's not, you know, it's, I always, when we're talking, it's like, it's a bifidobacterium longum. So, oh, I'm going to eat this bifidobacterium longum so my bifidobacterium longum levels go up. No, it doesn't work that way. It's an immune You're modulator, taking... right? <laughs> yeah. This is a food source of peptidoglycans. Uh -huh. And those peptidoglycans are going to shift your tryptophan breakdown and help uh, reduce some of the perceptions of stress and your ability yeah. to manage stress and, and, and to feel anxious and depressed. So, so it's, it's, it's definitely treating a symptom. You know, so in, in from my approach, it's like I sit down with somebody and they're they're you know say they're they're pretty uh, they've been at whatever their condition is they've been at it for a little while. Uh, there's some depression and anxiety that's either either at the root or maybe it's the cause of them not being able to get better. Whatever you say, but when I'm sitting in front of them, I'm seeing somebody who's an immunological mess and they're they've got some mental health issues or they're they're. They're anxious, they're depressed, they're not feeling well mentally. Yeah. Well, what I can do with that is I can use the 1714 strain to treat the symptoms so they feel better. Uh, so that, that, you know, it's a little bit of a, more of a positive feeling while I'm reconditioning their microbiome with the spores and making the, the long term change to their immune and, and microbiome health. Mm. Uh, that, that will be the long term co correction for all that. But I can treat the symptom along the way. Yeah. Because uh, it might take me three months, You're six right. months, nine months. Could be a long time to mm -hmm. get the right. microbiome back where it needs to be. 
And uh, and some people, they don't have that amount of time or, or they can be a lot more productive if the symptoms were more in check. So I think it's a hero product for sure. It's, it's just one of those things that it's not available anywhere else. There's not yeah. anywhere else to get a, a, a food source of peptidoglycans. You know, peptidoglycans are interesting for human, the development of human behaviors, mm -hmm. right? We, if you read about peptidoglycans, we, we know that there's, it's kind of, there's some communication between mom and baby with peptidoglycans and, and, and this initial development of, of personality traits has to do with, with certain types of peptidoglycans. But there's no food source of yeah. peptidoglycans. This is just a pregnancy thing. And so, but now with these bacteria, they're covered in peptidoglycans. And so we're actually giving a food source of that. Mm. So it's it's very unique product. That's that's one very interesting thing. And that's under the Microbiome Labs brand because we're now under the Novozymes umbrella, yeah. along with Precision Biotics. So we're, um, we're re representing the Precision Biotics branded uh, ingredients in the physician's market for the functional medicine doctors. Mm. Um, and they, want, yeah. they also have unique products too. So they have a very interesting, it's a dead bacteria. It's dead. They're telling right from the beginning. It's dead. Yeah. There's no live bacteria in this thing. But what it does is it gets into the stomach and it binds to H. pylori and pulls it out of the stomach and out of the small intestine. So it's a different way of addressing H. pylori infection, which is the leading cause of stomach cancer around the world. So so some very unique products, right? But what I love about it is no one's, we're not, we haven't changed our scientific basis, yeah. right? We, 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 we know what the spores do. We know when we're using spores, we're changing the patient's microbiome. We're improving the quality of the strains that are in their, in their microbiome, like a gardener would, right? Like you can, just throw seeds on the grass every day, or you can till the soil, you can fertilize it, you can create an environment that's conducive for those seeds to grow, right? So that's what the spores do. Like they recondition the whole microbiome yes. and change yes. that. So you can, but, I can attest to that after 20 years on spores, and that's the only thing I've taken, honestly. Like it's, right. it's, a, it's a game changer. So if you're listening, this is Zen Biome and Zen Cope. We have them at drjillhealth.com. I'll be sure and include links for you if you if you want to know those products wherever you're listening, because um, they really are great. And then just to summarize on your kynurinate quinolinic acid, that got a little biochemical. You and I know exactly this pathway of what we're talking about. But I wanted for those of you listening, maybe it like went over your head a little bit. This quinolinic acid can be measured on organic acid testing in urine. So if any of you have ever had an oat test, you can look at quinolinic acid. And one way you might know that you're sensitive to this or that you have high levels are if you don't do well with taking tryptophan or 5-HTP, you will shunt it into that pathway and create more inflammation. So these are those few people that I give tryptophan or 5-HTP and instead of sleeping, they're awake all night or they're anxious or they don't feel well. So if that's you listening, this quinolinic acid pathway could be elevated. And then I would recommend the Zen Biome Cope for during the day and the Zen Biome Sleep for at night. So I love that you just talked about that pathway though, because I did not, I know that the effects of those, but I didn't know it was related to the quinolinic acid pathway. Which is profound, and we're, we're, and we're seeing it in COVID long haulers. Yeah, too. yes, when, yep, when we're seeing the COVID long haulers, we're seeing those mm -hmm. elevated quinolinic acid levels. We're seeing dysfunctional tryptophan yes. breakdown. Oh, that makes so, so much that sense. And it, yeah, it's way more, more common than it used to be. So Tom, this has been yeah. so good, so full of good information. And I, again, I always love learning from you and learning more about what you're doing and, and just kudos to you for the business sense to bring this to market. Cause it really has, it's, if I have to think of one thing out there in my store, that's changed the practice the most in a good way, it's your products. It really, really is. So that's thank awesome. you. I love <laughs> no, but it's the truth though, but being, being a practitioner, and then, and then spending time with practitioners, it's, it's because of practitioners like you that we're beyond one product, right? Because if, if we had just been business people, we would just stay in the product. Right, let's do the mega sport, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but, but there's pain points and it's like, you know, some, some it's the, the inflammatory bowel patients really kind of were our best teachers, right? But there was a need, like not everybody got 100% better 100% of the time when they right. took the sports. So. Right. We needed other products, and, and and it was having conversations with docs like you, and getting what the pain points are, and 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 then thinking of things in a different way. That's how we've expanded to the whole line of products. 
Yeah, well, great work. Thanks for all the good you put into the world and all the brilliance you bring. And just again, you've changed millions of lives because of this. So um, thank you, Tom. And thank you today for taking the time to come on and tell your story and tell about it. And uh, hopefully in the next year or so, we'll have you back again and all the new things that are coming out. Um, But I sure appreciate your time today.